Hey CBC Music, this is Amanda Marshall, and these are the five songs that changed my life. know Whitney Houston. I was 12 years old. I had had a hellish year leading up to that because I had changed schools and I had no friends and I was a funny looking kid with this big hair and funny clothes. Whitney Houston came on TV and she had a curly wedge haircut and a big silver headband and I had a curly wedge haircut and I had a big silver headband and for a moment I saw myself reflected you know, in Whitney Houston, and it meant everything for me. It was a moment of connection that I had never experienced before as a kid. Beyond the fact that she was an incomparable vocalist and a, you know, a personal hero, I think, to all of us who do this for a living, regardless of what genre of music you make, she was someone who transcended race and genre and all that stuff. But that song for me was such an incredible moment of connection as a young person. And that's how that song changed my life. Water, Melissa Etheridge. This song came out when I was maybe 14 or 15. I remember somebody's older brother made a mixtape. It was sort of like a playlist, but on something we called a cassette. Chris Blackwell, who was the founder of Island Records, signed Melissa Etheridge, and he said, the next great American rock star is going to be a woman. That changed everything for me because it changed the idea of possibility in the music business and the kind of music you could make. She was brash. She was a player, she played guitar, she was really aggressive. And the song was so passionate and so open and so raw. It changed everything about the way I looked at the kind of music that was possible for me to make, the kind of music that I wanted to sing. I loved that song. Fight the Power, Public Enemy. July 1989, Spike Lee releases this song as the pretty much the theme song for Do the Right Thing, which was a seminal moment in cinema for people my age. I was about 17 at the time. A month later, a young black man named Yusuf Hawkins was murdered in Bensonhurst in New York, which touched off a summer of racial unrest and protests and clashes in the streets. It was such a galvanizing moment for people my age because it was the first time that we had a direct connection to any kind of uh, civil unrest related to race. We had grown up listening to the protest music of our parents, Dylan, uh, Buffy St. Marie, Ohio. But this song was about us, by us, for us. And when Chuck D gets to that, Elvis was a hero the most, but he never meant to me. That, to me, spoke so deeply to everybody like me and everybody my age because Elvis was a hero to most. He was the guy that we grew up with, but he wasn't our guy. Michael Jackson was our guy. So the song was a protest song of my generation for us. It was a huge galvanizing moment. Like hallelujah in the big sky country. Big Sky Country, Chris Whitley. I could have picked any song off this record. Chris Whitley made a record in 1991 with Canada's own Daniel Lanois and Malcolm Burns. They made it at Daniel Lanois studio in New Orleans and every single musician I knew had this record. We all wanted to be Chris Whitley. Chris Whitley was rangy and skinny and sexy and raw. He played dobro slide and he was such a gifted guitar player and vocalist. The songs were Americana, but at the same time they were they were like Heartland Blues. It was one of the very first songs that I performed when I started singing in clubs. It taught me arranging because I rearranged the song slightly for my own set. It taught me the range of what I could do with my own voice. He had this great falsetto and it taught me how to how to access that in my own voice. And mostly it just gave me an opportunity to like listen to the CD over and over again and look at the pictures, the beautiful pictures of Chris Whitley. He was such an incredibly gifted artist. That was a brilliant record living with the law. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Yesterday by the Beatles. Well, I have a confession to make. People are gonna hate me for saying this, but I did not grow up in a Beatles-centric household. But when I was about seven or eight years old, John Lennon died. And what I remember the most about that morning, because it happened overnight, was going to school that morning and every adult in the room was crying. Even if we weren't really fully aware of the sort of creative and musical force that the Beatles were, we knew it was important. The thing that I remember about this song was in, in the tremendous wave of grief that followed John Lennon's death, somewhere in there, I heard the story 
that the original title of the song was Scrambled Eggs. That, for a, a little kid who wanted to be in music and who was starting to scratch out songs on a notepad, that changed everything for me because it made it possible to have a first draft. You could write something and change it and go on and make something great out of it. Remember that anything is possible when you sit down with a blank page.